We're still in the Ragged Islands, in the Bahamas. We're only 60 miles away from Cuba right now. We're actually closer to Cuba than we are to Georgetown, which is pretty interesting. It's like kind of the furthest southwest you can go in the Bahamas. It's the last day. It's going to be really calm for a week or two. The wind's going to pick back up. Um, and it's even calmer than it was the other day when we went diving. We got a bunch of stuff. So we're going to get out there and go diving again, do some fishing again while it's super calm. Uh, last time the water was a little bit murky for us, but I think it's because uh, we were going on an outgoing tide. So all this, like the bank water was kind of flowing out of little cuts between the islands onto the ocean side um, and just making it a little bit, a little bit silty out there. Um, but right now it is beautifully calm and we were just took a dinghy ride out there and the ocean looks crystal clear so we're going to try to get a move on and hurry up and get loaded up and get out there before the tide switches it smells god awful as soon as we get back and we're in clean mode i will we grilled lobster yesterday it kind of like leaked in our grill and everything and now heads like exploded juice and guts everywhere and it's all sitting in the bottom of the grill and it stinks all right, we're gonna get some fish. Which cut should we go out of? Kind of like where we kind of ended yesterday, where we saw the shark. Where we ended? I know we've been slacking a little bit on the it. sailing videos for you guys, but we have been waiting five years to get back to the Bahamas, and our favorite thing in the Bahamas to do is to dive. Um, so we have just been having so much fun doing this all the time. However, our next few videos, I promise, are sailing focused, so hang on for those. All right, first spot, just outside this cut here. I don't know if you guys can see, but this water is so and clear. Nice ledge right there. Bottom looks great, water looks nice and clear. I know what you're thinking, it looks so warm, but we have been getting cold. <laughs> so full wetsuits. I mean, water's probably low 70s, right? But if you're diving for two hours and you're in and out of the water and in the water the whole time. It gets chilly. It doesn't, yeah. It gets a little chilly. So the other thing, like, you could swim in this water, no problem. You know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. If you're swimming laps, like exercising, whatever, an hour, it'd be just fine. But the other thing about free diving and spear fishing is you're trying not to move too much. You're trying to really, really relax and get your heart rate down and um, just not exert a lot of energy. But we do cover some ground. We do cover some, yeah, but my point is you're, we're not exercised. We're not creating heat and like staying warm. So that's like another reason these wetsuits are good. And then another reason is just kind of protection. Like you kind of bump up against coral here and there or rock or whatever. Um, so just a little bit of, you know, a barrier between that. Uh, I'm super comfortable in this wetsuit, which is like, uh, what is this, one and a half or two? One and a half or two millimeters, and then it kind of doubles up on my core. Um, and I feel perfect with this, not too hot. Gets a little chilly sometimes after a couple hours if it's like a cold day out or if we're dinging to other spots and it's windy and not sunny. And you, Sierra's got like a surf, a 3-2 surf wetsuit. This is a closed cell, uh, neoprene wetsuit, which is a little bit warmer in general for a given thickness. Okay, spot number one for the day. We were immediately welcomed by this massive barracuda who was not scared of us at all. And more barracudas seemed to just keep appearing all around us. And we even spotted them under most of the ledges we were hunting under. And it was honestly really eerie. And you never know how kudas are going to act when you spear a fish. So we took that as a sign that this was not meant to be our hunting ground today and got out of the water. I don't know why this lens is foggy. All right. Nothing at the first spot. A little bit cloudy again. Like, not too bad, but not crystal clear. <laughs> and a couple creepy barracuda down there. I hate those things. We decided to cruise about a mile north and found another nice reef that will hopefully be more welcoming. When 
When we go spearing, we are usually in 15 to 30 feet of water. We can both dive much deeper, but when it's just the two of us, we play it extra safe and find that we still have plenty of success in shallower water. So that's what we're doing today. We have the GoPro on Billy's mask, so please excuse the shakiness, but we love to give you a first-hand look at what we're looking at. We're always constantly scanning all around the reef, but we always look under ledges because that's where we find most grouper and lobster love to hang out, and we certainly don't want to miss one of those. If you look really carefully here, you can spot the antenna that Billy noticed, and here he is just taking his time, eyeing up the lobster to do his best to make sure it is big enough. You are allowed to spear lobster here in the Bahamas as long as you are only using a pole spear or Hawaiian sling. The minimum size is actually a little bigger than the Florida requirements with a carapace length of 3 and 3 eighths inches. You can never have more than 10 lobster in your boat in the Bahamas and you can never take egg bearing lobsters which is why when you are spearing them you have to make sure to get a really good look under their tail. Lobster season in the Bahamas is closed from April 1st to July 31st but don't worry this video was filmed back in late February. Follow Following the regulations is one of the most important things to us because we want there to always be lobster out here on the reefs. Another one of our favorite tools is our underwater light, which helps us get a much better look in these deep holes. You can see Billy shining it in here to try to see if he can see anything. This looks like it would be the perfect lobster or grouper den, but today it is empty. Over here we spot a few yellowtail snapper, one much bigger than the others, so Billy goes for it. The first shot was super close, but a miss. Y'all know Billy doesn't give up, so on the same breath, he's still going for it. And he's kind of just following it until he gets away from all of these rocks. And second shot, got him. When we are diving, one of us is always on watch at the surface, breathing up, keeping a close eye on the other person. And as soon as a fish is speared, the other person is either on fish duty if the fish and spear get stuck in a rock so the other person can swim up and get a breath, or if it's a good shot, the other person is on shark patrol as we swim back to the dinghy. And one of our rules is whenever we shoot a fish, we always hop back in the dinghy and switch spots. So we are not intentionally luring sharks into where we are spearfishing. If we see a shark, we also will not spear. As I said before, we are extremely careful because it is just the two of us out here and we are far, and I mean far, away from any help and with no real way of getting to help very fast. Okay, spot number three, we jump in and I immediately see a grouper and I try my best, but I couldn't get close enough to it, but I kind of scared it towards Billy. So Billy sees it right here and he goes down and tries to swim after it. So close, he's so close to being able to get a good shot, but just still far enough out of reach where he can't quite get to him, but he's not giving up. And as you can see, this guy is already spooked, so he's off. We stay around the area a bit, trying to look under the ledges where we think he went into, and under this ledge where we thought the other guy went, we actually found another grouper, but this is a Nassau grouper, and they're actually out of season when this video is taken, so we cannot take a shot on him. All grouper in the Bahamas have to be at least three pounds, and we try not to spear any grouper or snapper over about 10 pounds to hopefully lessen our chances of getting Sugatera. Nassau grouper season is open from March 1st through November 30th. But as I mentioned earlier in this video, this was filmed at the end of February, so we happily let him be. At this next rock, Billy is trying to signal to me that he sees a lobster, but he's telling me to go get it because he's still breathing up, but I have no idea what he's talking about. So he eventually goes down himself. And now watching this video while we're editing it, I cannot believe I missed it, but there he is. There's actually two in there, and Billy actually goes for the lobster behind it in order to try to get the lobster in front out a bit more because when you shoot these they kind of stir up silt and it makes it harder to see so he did the most perfect thing he could do and kind of scared the one in front out for me to be able to go back down and get him one thing we always try to do which i need to get a little bit better at which is as soon as you spear something grab it with your other hand and hold it tight so it can't back off of the spear because sometimes the spear will go in but it won't go it won't penetrate all the way through so it can still kind of get away but if you're holding it there's there's way less of a chance of that. And I just told you whenever we spear a fish, we always get in the dinghy and move to prevent like all the sharks kind of coming where the, or there's blood in the water. However, we tend not to do that when we get lobster because they don't bleed and we find that they don't attract sharks as much. So we'll go down for one more dive before we call, call it quits for the day.
Billy is using his light to try to get any advantage, and I have no idea how he spotted this one, but look, right in this itty bitty hole, he must have seen his antennas, and there's another lobster coming in the boat. And this is actually a different type of lobster, but I'll let Billy tell you all about that. Yeah. That's all right, right? Yeah. So check this out. So we haven't really seen too many of these in the Bahamas, but these are different kinds of lobster. I We know them as Spanish lobster. We'd never shoot a regular Caribbean lobster or Spidey lobster this small. Uh, but yeah, again, really tasty. We've gotten a bunch of them in the Caribbean, but again, never really seen them in the Bahamas, but there you go, Spanish lobster. I'll put a, a name in the corner here with like other, other common names of it. Uh, but that's what we know about them. So pretty cool to see that guy. Super tasty. All right, I think we're done diving. We got a bunch of lobster. I got shot a little, uh, nice little yellowtail. And we're gonna see if we can uh, fish and catch some more yellowtail. We're gonna, we have some chum, chum off the dinghy. And uh, maybe get some yellowtail or grouper. Or... I really didn't see any mutton down there, but maybe we'll get a mutton. I didn't see any hog or, either. Or hog, yeah. We'll go out a little bit deeper, see what uh, what's out there. We got some chum going. Caught a couple fish. I got a strawberry grouper, but he fell off right before the boat. And a little a little lane snapper. That's about it so far. I have had no bites. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit. This is going to be the breeze that starts for the next few days, week, two weeks. No. Getting a nibble. Got one? Oh yeah, get it up, get it up. Strawberry? Uh, sure. Oh, trigger. Are we keeping them or no? Okay. Sierra got a queen trigger. The bad thing about trigger fish is that they're really hard to clean. They have really, really thick skin. And I said I would clean it last time, but you took over anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you will clean this today. You know what I heard um, that you can make with trigger fish? That's really good trigger fish to be Really? Yeah. Sierra got one. And I'm not sure what's happening here, but our GoPro is glitching, so you are going to have to miss the entire dinghy ride back, Jetty's lunch break, and our adventure to the next spot. Okay, before we leave the ride, there's one last thing we really wanted to do. We heard this there's this blue hole with just hundreds of super friendly sharks. <laughs> so we're out here, our friends are out here with us, they've done it before, and we're gonna go check it out. This blue hole is incredible. And look at how deep this is and how drastic that ledge is. Like what? Our friends EJ and Marissa had told us about this blue hole and told us how many sharks there are here. So we all agreed not to spear any fish when we were here, just because we knew there were so many sharks. So this really was just a planned snorkel adventure with the spears just for a little bit of protection. <laughs> We weren't seeing the sharks that I was kind of hoping for, but we did see these really cool jack, and then our friend EJ figured why not. He saw a lobster, so he went for it, and as soon as he released his spear, all of the sharks started coming up from the depths, and it was the craziest thing. Like we said, we've never witnessed sharks going after lobster, and we were expecting the sharks to be here, so we weren't scared, but they all just started appearing none of them were aggressive and it was just the coolest thing
But this is exactly why we plan not to shoot any fish in this location. You saw like five lobster? Yeah. In that same hole? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we could go back and we'll have to try to find them. EJ mentioned he saw a few more, so Billy figured he went down, he saw this Nassau grouper, and right over here, look, another lobster. Billy's checking around, make sure there's no sharks super close to him. He's doing his best to check underneath, make sure there's no eggs, does one more scan to make sure no sharks snuck up on him, and there he goes with the perfect shot. I swam down with a camera and a spear, just in case any friendly sharks decide to get a little bit too close. But none of them paid any attention, thank goodness, and I realized Billy was not wearing gloves, and if you've ever touched a spiny lobster, that is a terrible idea. It hurts. If you want, yeah. Um, especially when there's lots of sharks around, so I offered to grab the lobster from him to give him a little assistance. Grab the tight. Do you, do you come up that no, did you do? Are you done? I don't know. I'll fix that up. Are you done? <laughs> that was so sick. Are you going back in or not? I, I'm going to try just like, I'm going to look right here real quick again. Yeah. And I know it might seem like we're getting a lot of fish today, like over excessive. However, we've been in the two Bahamas for two months at this point. We've already eaten through all of our meat and fish is our main source of protein. So this is literally our version of grocery shopping for the week. Here, Billy finds a conch, perfect size. Look at that lip. And here's another one. Wow, super good camouflage there. And one more. And I think he knows that all of the lobster and the fish that we already have, I probably don't want to clean much more. So he stops at three, even though we can get six. And with that, we are calling our grocery shopping for the week complete. Wow, that was absolutely insane. How wild was that? Um, Have you ever seen so many sharks in one little area? Yeah. No, no, that was so nuts. What What were you thinking when you were pulling the lobster up? I went, I went all the way around, and I didn't see any before I shot them. So I was like, all right. And then as soon as I got them, I didn't have gloves, but I grabbed them with my hands just to secure them so he's not flopping all over the place and we didn't lose them. And then I started looking around again to make sure no sharks are going to charge in after me. They kind of all cut up. Wear your gloves, people. But I think it also helped that EJ got his first, and they did come up. They all came up, like, all at once, but none got too close. Yeah, none got really aggressive or too close. Like, they kind of came in fast at first, and then we saw them all, like, freaking 50 sharks. But then they, like, they weren't incredibly aggressive after that. So I was like, all right. And, like, sharks normally don't go after lobster. We would not have shot a fish there with all those sharks. But that was probably the coolest thing ever. It was just, like... You're looking on this ledge out into the abyss and then all of a sudden these sharks come up to the surface and they're just like lurking around. It was so cool. Yeah. I'm so glad we went. Yeah, it was sick. Uh... Okay guys, I don't think there is any fish prettier than a queen trigger fish. And we caught so many today that we might as well make a fish print out of it. So let's give it a go.
Whoa, that looks so freaking cool. Let me see. Oh my goodness. That looks so good. I'm an artist! <laughs> Isn't he so cool? Yeah. Okay, how many more should I do? Got our machete that we have in Florida. We gotta use big, big old knives to cut open these coconuts. Which one you want cut first? Cut out. This is looks like an older one. I don't know what the. This is how I was doing it the other day. I don't like to be standing like that. Hey, you like a saw. This is what you're looking for. Yes. Mmm. Ooh, that's really good. Ah. <laughs> no, not how the best way to get this off. Without cutting it. So. Spoon it off. Mmm. Mm -mm. You want this, Chats? You better eat it. Yeah, we love coconut. Good girl. Cleaning our catch. We got a bunch of little trigger fish that Sierra couldn't stop catching today. These are the colorful queen trigger. And you made some incredible uh, fish prints with these. Which is really cool. Colorful fish prints. We got a bunch of nice lobster. There's a tail. Uh, we got a nice uh, strawberry grouper, and then this is our little Spanish lobster. Stay, Jetty. Nope. Come on, out of the fish blood. Um, and then we got a yellowtail snapper. Smorgasbord. Here's our other lobster. Nice big one. Just gonna clean these guys and get them prepped, and we'll eat some of it. Uh, for dinner. Is as hard as you've been told. Yeah, the skin on these things is like, I think that's part of the reason like a lot of people don't keep trigger is their skin is like leather, really. Difficult to get through. You can do it. Is that sushi grade fish, Daddy? She's all up in your business. <laughs> okay, it's getting late. <laughs> that was a long day, a lot of fish cleaning, a lot of artwork, a lot of boat cleaning, but now we have moved on to dinner. I have just started some like rice and beans, Cuban rice and beans. Um, and those are on the stove. Billy just put a lobster on to steam. And what else lobster are we gonna do? Lobster tail. And then we're gonna do, I think we're just uh, I think we're just gonna like saute the fish. We've uh, been very good about um, like. Using all our food. Every single ounce. Mm-hmm. Leftover that's, rice. And that's rice from a week and a half ago too. No, adding into the beans. That long ago is it's from days. when we made sushi. No, oh, that's a sushi <laughs> rice. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Coconuts. Grouper and yellowtail snapper here. Just gonna saute it real quick. Add some uh, old bay to it. <laughs> I didn't really get it hot enough to be called saute, to, for this to be sauteed, but it's all right. There you go. It's a feast. We gotta taste this. 
Whew. Stretch for this feast. All right, this one is, uh, let's see. This one is the strawberry grouper. It's so moist. Wow, that's amazing. And then here's the yellowtail. Yellowtail snapper. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow. It's crazy how the grouper is like a little bit smoother and more buttery, and the snapper is a little more flaky. But both still like tender and moist and really good. Got the lobster here. Mm-mm. -mm. Your Cuban rice and beans. Hot. Okay, it's hot, hot, hot. Mm. Those were inspired by our friends on La, La Cruz. And then this was actually inspired by Steve, Steven, who is crew on Mike's boat. Mm. Healthy. Cheap. Caught half of it ourselves. Cheap. Yeah, right? This whole meal probably, <laughs> like, not including what it takes to catch this stuff, this whole meal probably costs us, what, $6 total? $7. <laughs> And this, <laughs> this would be like a $45, no. Yeah, like a $40 dish in a restaurant. I love fish. Well, thanks for coming with us today on our spear fishing adventure. As close to Cuba as you can get without being in Cuba. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Maybe by the time this video is out, we will have some products made with some trigger fish and hogfish. T-shirt, hot fish t-shirt. T-shirt, I think, maybe. Well, either way, check the check out the Tula shop, which there's a link in the description along with every video. Maybe that'll be in there, but maybe it's just our regular stuff. Or maybe it's a one-of-a-kind original print made from my artwork. <laughs> and uh, I guess from here, we're probably going to start hopping back up this chain of islands and, um, I don't know, head back up north, but slowly and explore some spots in between. You want to try some hogfish? Yummy. Well, thank you guys for coming. We had fun with you. Bye-bye. <laughs>